We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about flipping properties, house flipping. Uh, and I'm going to ask a couple folks from the syndicate to join me up here on stage. They're people that are doing flips and they know a lot about them. But I just want to make some general comments about this topic before I invite them onto the stage. Um, I get a lot of people, we get a lot of new people that are just getting into real estate investing that join the syndicate because it's really a, a place where they can get the help they need, they can learn, it's a safe environment, everybody helps each other. But the number one thing I tell people that are new to real estate is that they should get into flipping houses, flipping properties. The biggest reason why, it's twofold. First of all, it's where you're gonna learn the fastest because if you do a, a house flip, you're going to experience every part of real estate investing. And very simply put, uh, find, doing a good house flip, it's all about finding a property that you can buy for less than what it's actually worth, which is one of my carnal rules in real estate. Never ever get into a real estate deal unless you're buying the property under the retail value, which means when you get your appraisal done, your appraisal should always be slightly higher than what you're paying. So you're going to get really good at that, identifying properties and then acquiring properties. Um, everybody has to master how you raise money. There's just no way around it. Um, and if you're doing flips, it's great because it's small amounts of money. And lenders, people that are lending money, they love lending on flips because they know they're getting their money back because the property is being sold. So you learn about that. And then renovations, creating lift. Um, Probably the most important thing, skill that any real estate investor can learn is how to be able to assess a property and determine how much you can increase the value of that property before you buy it. Uh, and you get to experience that assessment side, but one of the smartest things you can do in any type of flipping situation is make sure that you're doing at least some of the work yourself. Because every hour of energy you put into it is less money you have to borrow, which means more profit for you at the end. So you're gonna get good at managing renovations and then selling the properties. You know, you get in, in doing one flip, if you do it right, you should learn immensely, but you could easily make anywhere between $100,000 and $200,000. So think about this for a second. Well, let me ask you guys a question. If, if you could put an extra $150,000 in cash in your bank account this year, an extra new 150 grand, would it make a difference in your year? Right? So why not do a flip? Even if you do one in a year, you're gonna make 150 grand. Or start doing it, just do one a year, and then over time, you can put a system together to do them. So right now, I live in Whitby, Ontario, which is a suburb on the outside of Toronto. We have a really great office there. We've got a staff of 14, I think, in the office. We're hiring people all the time. But I literally am closing on a new house every month for the six months, for the next six months. So I have a property that I'm closing. Actually, I have a property I'm closing on in two weeks. I better get the financing figured out for that. I have a house that I'm closing at the end of February. I have a house that I'm closing at the end of March. I have another house that we're closing on at the end of April. I have a fourplex that we're closing on at the end of May and another house that I'm putting an offer in on Monday when I'm back in Toronto that we're gonna close in June. And we're flipping every one of them. And every one of these deals that I'm doing, five of them, I'm gonna make 200 grand on it. What's five times 200 grand? Right. And so the best part about it is if you start doing this and you take it seriously, over time you're gonna build the right relationships that's gonna allow you to do this the easiest way because the way I do them now, I go out and look at the properties. Most times an agent already knows what I'm looking for and already knows how I assess the values. So they only show me deals that they believe that I'm gonna buy. I tell all the agents I work with, if you show me two duds, I'll never work with you again. So they all wanna keep working with me so they, so they show me great deals. I go in, I put the offers in, I arrange the financing the day it closes, or the day that we get paper in on the, on the property, I send a guy named Patrick over there. Patrick runs my construction team. He's a contractor, so he's not an employee. He's not on payroll. He's got his own business doing renovations. He's been doing renovations w for me and with me for years. But the deal I have with him is I'm going to do one house every month. I, want, I say to him, I want you to bring in all the people you need 
to make sure you're renovating one house per month, and I'll pay you whatever you want to charge me. You know, he's a contractor. He's still going to get paid. But I said, if you finish all of these properties on time, I'll give you 10% of what I make. So if I make a million bucks, he's going to make an extra 100 grand in extra cash. And he freaking loves it because now he doesn't have to go looking for work. He's still making what he would make if he was finding his own deals. But he also now gets that extra 100 grand just for helping me manage it. And that's what you can take it to. I mean, think about this. If you could, and it'll take you time to do this. You're not going to do this overnight. It might take you a year or more to get the right people in place and figure it out. But if you could replicate, replicate that system, and put a team together that helps you, so you could do six of these in the next 12 months, or over a 12-month period, so it's one every two months, and every one of them makes you $200,000. Who, who'd be willing to do that for a living? Right? It's $1.2 million. But it's not even the best, it's not even the most important reason to do it. I've been flipping properties for 20 years. Today, I have right now three major resorts under development. We're talking at our Hay Bay property in Ontario, we have 75 people working there on Monday, every day, you know, building that place. We have a place in Bancroft, Ontario, which is about two hours north of Toronto. It's a three-acre property. There's 30 people working there. And out in Prince Edward Island, we have a property on Chelton Beach being built. Uh, and there's 25 people there. And all I did for those is I raised the money, I hire the people, they do all the work, but I own 80% of the properties. The Hay Bay Resort is going to make somewhere between 10 and $15 million in net income per year. I own 70% of that property. It was 70% of $10 million. Seven million bucks just for managing a project. Anybody want to learn more about house flipping? Have I convinced you yet? Is anybody, is this a good time to, a good way to spend some time? Yeah. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a couple friends to join me on stage. First of all, um, I, I love watching Adam. Adam is getting better and better at doing this stage stuff every day. Um, but he, he reminds me so much of when I started public speaking 25 years ago because he knows exactly what he wants to say and then he gets up here and he... He forgets, and he's so honest. He's like, oh, shit, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> but Adam is an amazing human being. He uh, is a project manager by profession. He's done lots of real estate deals himself. Inside of the syndicate, we have three coaches. Um, these people are all certified coaches, and they're professionally trained to work one-on-one -on -one with members of the syndicate who want their help on projects. And Adam's one of those three people out of... Thousands and thousands of people in my entire community. Adam is one of three people. Um, he really knows his shit. Uh, let's give him a big round of applause. Come on up to the stage here. Right? <laughs> then another thing I like to do in the syndicate is um, do deals with people. I, I regularly jump into deals with people. And I don't even know when it was. It was like six months ago or something. Um, Andrew King joined the syndicate. He lives in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I flew all the way from Halifax to be here this weekend. Uh, I have a, so a soft spot in my heart from anybody from there because that's where I'm from, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Anybody here been to Nova Scotia, been to Halifax? That's where I'm from. Awesome. Yeah, no, it's a freaking amazing place. Andrew and his partner are uh, doing flips in Atlantic Canada, but uh, we're... We're in the middle of doing, we're just starting now. It's going to be about an eight-year project. We're in the middle of buying about 200 acres of land in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, and putting together, a, well, it's probably going to be somewhere between five and $700 million community development that's happening. Um, Andrew knows a lot about Flip, so let's give him a big round of applause. We'll get him to come on up here. And then the last thing, just to round out this panel, I'm going to invite a couple nurses up here. Um, Brittany and Sean Louis says are traveling nurses. They literally travel all over North America, you know, doing these foreign and like far off in the north nursing assignments, but they're real estate investors. They are buying properties and rehabbing them and turning them into places where these nurses can stay as they're traveling. So they're heavy into it as well. 
and they're going to round out our panel. So let's give a big round of applause for <laughs> Sean and Brittany Louis X. So as those guys are, walk, are coming up here, Adam, start off by just telling everybody a little bit more about your background and how you developed this crazy expertise around helping people with lift. Yeah, so I started uh, framing houses in high school. Um, when I finished high school, I framed for a little, and then my mom said, well, I actually didn't want to work full time. And my mom also said, if you're, if you're not going to school, you got to pay rent. So I went to college for architectural engineering technology. So I learned the basics of designing buildings. Because he didn't uh, want to pay rent. Yeah, he didn't want to pay rent. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so a uh, local contractor from Waterloo, um, the, one of the vice presidents came to talk and said, yeah, we're always looking for the right people. And I said, well, I'm the right person. So I started working for them. Uh, I got my carpentry license and I started supervising for them on six and seven story buildings. Uh, I ran my own renovation company for a number of years. It was always a dream of mine to do. And uh, then, yeah, just before COVID hit, I was lucky. I, I got an offer to come back to the general contractor. They had two 20 story uh, apartment towers that they were building in North Waterloo. Um, so yeah, so I said, I'll come back. And then for the last couple of years, I've been a construction manager for them. And uh, it's, it's mind-boggling to think about it, but I help manage over 500 million in active construction all over southern Ontario. Our largest project is over 300 million dollars. Uh, it's a retirement home community we're building uh, just uh, just west of Barrie, north of Toronto. Um, and yeah, I've been flipping houses, and we, my wife and I, we've been buying and upgrading and downgrading houses for 15 years, ever since our first house. We rented rooms to students, and then we had kids, and then we got a duplex, and. Um, now we're buying duplexes and flipping houses, and now I'm helping teach what I've learned over the last 15, 20 years to other people. Awesome. I forgot to mention, Adam, uh, Andrew's also a chef. So he's uh, on top of everything else he's doing. Tell everybody about your background. Uh, hi, guys. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I'm a newbie to the syndicate, which is great. You know, Ken said, hey, you want to get up here and talk? Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> All you newbies out there, this is how to do it. Uh, yeah, I have a long career in hospitality. I ran major restaurant groups, you know, running $20 million accounts. Uh, I was a corporate chef, and I've always kind of dabbled in real estate. On the side, my party Marty, or my partner, sorry, Marty. My party Marty. Yeah, party Marty yeah. <laughs> you should have seen him last night, yeah. <laughs> it's a fitting name, yeah. Uh, we're high school buddies, and uh, he's in Calgary. He's a contractor. So uh, it's awesome to work with him. And so we always kind of dabbled, and now we're just taking it seriously. So here we are. Yeah. Totally. And like Ken mentioned, we have a deal going, you know, within two months of just talking and networking and meeting the right people. It's, it's happening. Yeah, so it's exciting. Cool. Thank you. Sean, Brittany? Um, yeah, OK. So uh, similar story, new to the syndicate. And uh, hey, why not come up on stage? Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, so we're nurses of uh, over 20 years each. And uh, our real estate venture really just started um, probably three or four years ago. Um, we started mainly traditionally, just saving up our own down payments, buying houses, flipping, and uh, realized that doesn't work very well. So um, we started uh, getting into the more OPM strategies and uh, started flipping houses more. And as a travel nurse, um, realized very quickly that Housing and travel nursing uh, is a huge demand, so we started focusing on midterm rentals uh, in areas of demand with uh, with travel nursing. So that's that's what we were focused on. And I think what Brittany is omitting to tell everyone today is that we also own a medical clinic in Northern Ontario. Um, we so we went from New Market back to North Bay, where we're from, Northern Ontario, and we decided to flip an office space actually. So we went into this old grungy office space with the last you know, $2,000 in our pocket and it was make or break at the time and we decided, you know what, Let's, we're going all in in this. And um, that's why we're so drawn to the syndicate as well and, and flipping and, and to see the potential out of these kind of, I call them zombie houses or zombie offices, um, to take that office space and turn it into the amazing clinic that it is today. Um, is fantastic, and of course, back home, we were just uh, awarded a grant from our Member of Parliament uh, for all the success that we've done to continue to employ nurses in a northern on Ontario community where it's underserved. So, uh, yeah, we're just happy to be here, and we're extremely excited to be a part of the syndicate as well. All right, so... <laughs> when it comes to flipping pro hot properties, houses, 
there's, there's just a couple simple important pillars in this process. Finding the right property, financing the right property, rehabbing the property, and selling it. Mm -hmm. So there's four of you, there's four points. <laughs> Who wants to talk about finding properties? Who wants to give some thoughts around how do you find good properties? So I mean, I could say right off the hop, um, you know, finding properties, using all the social media strategies that Ken's taught us recently, you know, um, Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji, um, reaching out to the network of real estate agents that you're working with or in the area that you're interested in working in, reaching out to mortgage brokers, anyone that you know, family, friends, you know, those are the best kind of strategies to find out where these places are. And um, how did it work with us for office spaces? I mean, even houses, like for our office space even, it was just going around and seeing these for sale signs or these uh, for rent signs and going to talk to the landlord and saying, you know, hey, what's up with this place? What can we do to improve it? And how, how can we make it a better community by improving this house or office space? How about wholesaling? Oh, well, wholesaling is definitely one. Yeah, definitely. Talk about that for a bit. Uh, I, I know you're going down deep into that <laughs> rabbit hole now. I am, yeah. So um, joining the syndicate, I'm, I'm going to be new with uh, working with Tony. Uh, in wholesaling, so yeah, definitely working uh, with wholesalers, reaching out to wholesalers. Um, they're a huge strategy, you know, getting these properties uh, at a decent price where there's already built in equity from, you know, that uh, purchase. So uh, that's a strategy that Brittany and I had previously with flipping. Uh, we'd always look for properties that had that built in equity. We would never, uh, you know, get into a deal where we're paying retail price yeah. or listed price. It would always be, you know, something that's undervalued that we can uh, create that lift in, or it already has that equity built in that uh, has that lift off the buy. Yeah, one of the things that's really important about wholesaling to understand is that every day in this country, there's somebody on the verge of losing a house, distressed properties, and that you know, I don't even know who you really blame for that. You blame their parents, really. Who can blame their parents? Who can blame their parents? <laughs> Um, there's, I don't know, is there, is anybody here like reading books? Is anybody into reading books? Yeah. So there's a book that really helped me. I, I've read a ton of books in my life. I owned a major publishing company for years, but there's a couple books that really, really have changed my life forever. One of them is written by a guy named Joel Olstein. It's called Becoming a Better You. Um, it's one I would suggest everybody read. If you want to improve the quality of your life, there's a realization that you'll make in that book that fucked me up. And I'll tell you what it was. Um, in the book, he talks about heredity. Um, and every, when you hear the term heredity, most of us think about disease and disorder, right? Hereditary conditions that exist in families and lineages and bloodlines. But where he kind of does the mind snap on me is he, said, he, he gave a new definition to that word, heredity. And he talked about our relationships with money. Basically, in the book, he says that if you know anybody... This was his polite way of saying, look in a mirror, by the way. If you know anybody that's struggling with money, if you know them well enough, ask them about their parents, and you're going to find their parents struggled with money. If you ask them about their parents, you're going to find their parents struggled with money. So understanding that gave me the strength to realize that I could actually change it. You know, I could decide that I didn't want to be another broke family. In my family, I, could, I went back six generations, and I found out that Every single person in my family was broke. In fact, my great, 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 great seven grandfathers was from Cork County, Ireland. Um, and he was so fucking broke. He, he actually spent most of his life in jail. He was so stupid. He was a horse thief. He'd get out of jail, and it was like a one-room jail. Like, we're talking back in the mid-1800s. And the stories go that he would get out of jail... He would have to walk five miles home in the dead of winter, and he'd walk by a bar, and he'd know all the guys are inside drinking, and their horses were all tied up outside, so he'd borrow a horse to get home, get arrested by the time he got home for stealing a horse, and go back to jail again. And we had a bunch of real fucking smart people in my family. <laughs> but when I read this book, it was literally right at that same time my son was coming, and I, I read that book, and I thought, man, if I don't do something to be different, I'm not going to be different. I'm going to be the same. And having kids coming, anybody else ever have that revelation? Like when you have kids on the way thinking, holy fuck, how am I going to pay for this? <laughs> yes. Right? 
But for me, I, that's what snapped me. That's what made me go and talk to my buddy Paul. That's what made me get into the mortgage business. And I have, I've never looked back. I, I can proudly say that I'm the first wealthy person in 10 generations in my family on my mother and father's sides. And I know that to be true now because they all fucking call me all the time beg begging me for money. <laughs> but you, you, can, you can totally change who you are if you read that book. Um, and I don't know why I told you that. That was just a fun story. I guess I just had that on my heart to share with you. Yeah, you, like, I think, I think anybody, and I'll come back to house flipping, don't you worry. But I think anybody who truly, truly wants more in life, wants to make more money in life, wants to be more in life, um, it starts, there's, I, I, I actually did a, a, an hour-long speech called The Two E's to Success. Uh, and part of it was, was kind of inspired by that book. And I did this speech in front of 35,000 people at a stadium in Singapore back in 2006. And the whole speech centered around this one fact. If you want to change your life and become better, it's only going to happen if you increase your experiences and change your environment. And so just by being here right now and being around these people, make a decision while you're here that you're going to come to every one of these I do for the rest of your life. Just make that decision. Like, are you already enjoying yourself being here? But think about this. The event we're doing here on tomorrow, we'll have about 300 plus people in here. The one we're doing in Ottawa, sorry, in Toronto in October, we'll have 800 people at it. The one we do next spring in Vancouver, we'll have 1,000 people at it. The one we do in Toronto next two years, well, it's just going to keep growing and you'll get to be a part of it. It's really freaking cool. All right, so now finding the money to buy the properties. So there's a specific way, if you're, doing lip, if you're doing flips, there's a specific way to organize the mortgages for specific reasons. And I know I talk about it a lot in the syndicate, but who wants to give that a shot now? Brittany? I'll go. <laughs> I think I'm next one. Um, Absolutely, yeah. So um, finding the money, well, that's when the fun starts. Um, so typically, uh, you want to put yourself in a position where you found a great property that has some equity. Um, and then uh, the first route you're going to do is secure that first mortgage. So first mortgage is going to be anywhere from 60 to 70% of that value of the home. And hopefully you can uh, secure that with a, with a lender that's slightly lower interest rates. Um, just get a Kyle that's, Ford. That's going to, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, where, where is he? Uh, over here. You just need a Kyle Ford, that's all. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, the next step is you, you want to fund the rest of that. So the other 30% uh, is going to be uh, your second mortgage, and that's going to cover that last piece. So that's your down payment, because um, ideally you want to do these flips with none of your own money. Yep. So that's the main goal. And, uh, and then the last part uh, is that third mortgage. So that's going to cover all of your carrying costs. Uh, your interest rates, and uh, also a management fee. Because renovations. you also want to get paid for that. And your renovations. Your renovations are going to be in that. So you want to make sure that includes everything that's going to be covered. And I think that's why when you're acquiring these deals, it's so important to know your numbers. Uh, because if you don't know how much things are going to cost, you don't know what the value of your property is, then you're not going to know what you need. And you could end up having to fund this on your own. Yeah, and I think there's, there's a very important step that you normally do when you're buying the property that's super important if you're gonna get somebody to lend you money over the value that you're paying for the property. Mm -hmm. you, did I, did I, I tweak your memory? I know what you're hinting at, yeah. Go <laughs> so, ahead, talk about that. So you want, uh, you want to get an appraisal of your property. So um, not just an appraisal of the property as it is, but you want an after repair value of your property so that you know what it's gonna be worth and so you can also bring that to your lender so you know that there's enough room in the property to make sure that you're gonna be able to cover those mortgages that you're, that you're borrowing. And to add what Brittany's saying, we always go into a property with um, the mindset that we go in with the appraiser, with any uh, general contractors, ourselves, possibly even the real estate agent at the same time, so we can get a good understanding of the, the base that we're working with, how much renovation costs are gonna be, what the appraisal would be, and sometimes I'm not saying that you're trying to influence anyone in any way, but 
if an appraiser goes into the building, they can actually see for themselves what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. Yeah. And like Ken says, there's specific, you know, well, you uh, nuances and finishes through. that you want to do. So you want to let them know that you're going to do that. Um, there might be a chance that they don't know that you're going to use those finishes, so they might undervalue your, the appraisal. You never know. Yeah. But if you're letting them know, then at least they have a good understanding of how that uh, property is going to be rehabbed. And, and yeah, so when we go into a property, we take our appraiser, the contractor, before I'm even putting an offer in. Yeah, so okay. then I know everyone um, is on the same page, and the appraiser is very clear on what I'm going to do. They've seen the property. They know what finishes I'm going to put in because I've walked through it with them. So. Is there anybody in here that's done a flip? Okay, for all you guys have done flips, raise your hands good and high if you've done a flip in the past. Okay, put your hands down again, and I want you to raise your hand if, when you were doing that flip before you bought the property, you got an appraiser to do two appraisals, an as-is appraisal to say what you were buying it for, and an after-repair value appraisal so you knew exactly what it was going to be worth after the renovations are done. Raise your hands if you did both of those appraisals. There's, there's only, there's literally only... Two, two people, three people that did that. It's amazing how many people don't realize this. And so let me explain that to you a little bit. Appraisers in Canada regularly do after repair value appraisals. They do them every day. Who knows the scenario, the, the situation where they're asked to do those after repair value appraisals regularly? Anybody? Construction, household construction. Whenever somebody goes to a bank and gets a construction mortgage, the bank has to find out what's the place going to be worth when it's done. They hire an appraiser that looks at the plans, looks at the environment, looks at comparables around, and says, this house will be worth this. So why not get that same appraisal done when you're doing a flip? It costs an extra 500 bucks, so I just bought a fourplex in Whitby that um, I don't know if I'm going to sell it as a flip or keep it. I might turn it into short-term rentals, but either way, I went to the appraiser and I said, here's my budget. Here's exactly what I'm going to do to the place. He, when he went to the site, I went with him and I showed him around. I said, I'm going to do this here, this here, this here, and this here. I bought it for a million dollars. And he told me, he came back to me and said, when this place is finished, it's going to be worth $2.3 million. So I got um, the million dollars from private lenders. I got a first mortgage. Um, from a mortgage broker and a second mortgage to a hundred to a hundred thousand or to a million dollars, and it's going to cost me about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in work. But now that I have an appraisal that says it's going to be worth two million dollars, I've got a number of private lenders, seven thousand of them actually, that will lend me money up to that two million dollars. So they're going to lend me the three hundred and fifty thousand dollars to do it. Why would they do that? Because they know after it's finished, it's going to be worth $2 million. I just have to refinance it at $1.35 million, which is 65%. And mortgage brokers can get that type of financing arranged. So it makes it really easy. It really makes this bulletproof, actually. But part of this comes down to really being sure of the budget you need to demo, to re renovate the place, to create the lift. And so how do we do that, guys? How do we increase, like how do we figure out the budget so that we know exactly what the numbers we're going to need? Well, for me, um, I got a team of, I got an electrician, I got a plumber, I got an HVAC guy that I've developed good relationships and they were all referred to me from other friends out there. So um, best thing you can do is if you need contractors, start reaching out to your circle of friends and family and, and make those relationships with those people now so that when you need them, like I can, I can just do a quick sketch and say, you know, it's 800 square foot. We're, you know, we're going to put a duplex in this basement, 800 square feet. Here's roughly where I'm going to put some outlets. And my electrician, you know, within an hour can give me a rough price, you know, to the closest thousand. It's going to, you know, eight to ten thousand. If we got to do a new panel, he'll say, you know, it'll be twelve thousand. I get that number that day. Um, when I go through, I measure my kitchens and I do a quick uh, rough calculation of how many square feet it is and uh, lineal, you know, perimeter of each room. And so I can go home and just start pumping in numbers, you know, if there's, you know, a thousand square feet, it's roughly five dollars a square foot for flooring, you know, if someone else has got to install it, maybe it's eight or ten dollars a square foot. Uh, kitchens, right away, I'll go home and I just design it on Ikea real quick, because I know if I need a kitchen right away, I can go pick it up from Ikea, you know, the next day. Um, and then if I can get someone to make the kitchen for me, then I can save even more money uh, on that. So I can get all those numbers within, within a day or two, because I've got that team in place already. 
um, and then obviously my experience as well and the history that I have. I keep track of how much, roughly what everything's costing and, and how much then value it's also gotten me as well. So you, you get real good at um, figuring out and, and also figure out what's the little things you can do to, to raise value. So, you know, if you're gonna, if you're flipping it, maybe pay that extra thousand or two thousand to go with the granite countertops, even if everyone in the neighborhood selling laminate countertops. Quartz. Or quartz, la yeah, granite, whatever. Granite's an whatever, old school whatever, thing. whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, so those little things, right? So when the biggest thing is, you know, if it's a first time home buyer that's, you know, buy, you know, a lot of times you're getting flips or cheaper properties. So, you know, it's a first time home buyer maybe buying it. When they walk in and you've got quartz or, or granite countertops uh, and you've, you've upgraded that kitchen a little bit that's going to last longer, they, they, it's kind of like a sigh of relief. Like I've gone into properties too. I'm like, yes, you know, it's already a good countertop. I don't have to worry about replacing that in five years' time when I got some more money, right? Mm -hmm. So you may lose a little bit of that profit, but you didn't really lose it because you didn't have it in the first place. But you can just do that little bit of over-renovation, and then it just stands out above every other house in that area as well. What are some of the things, Andrew, like if, if, if I wanted to kind of put icing on this cake, I'd, I'd want you to talk about like sticking to your budget. How do you, you want to make profit on these things, right? So, so what are some of the things that come into your mind with, with respect to how you do the renovations and how you manage all this and the sale so that you're, you're really limiting the losses and increasing the profit? Absolutely. Are, I, I go, well, let's go back to Party Marty. He's my contracting partner. <laughs> so a lot of time he does all that for me, right? So, but I learn from him. So the great thing if you do join the syndicate or you're in it, you'll see partnerships forming. Um, and they'll give you free advice, yeah. you know, right off the bat. Yeah. But I pass it off to Marty. I'll walk into a house, like we put one up on the, a couple weeks ago there, it was a fire job, right? So I don't know about fire, you know, or refit and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. He walks through, I just got a camera, I walk around, show it to him. He goes, oh yeah, yeah, and he's got a pen and paper, he's in Calgary, so if you guys do need a contractor in Calgary, you'll see him at the party tonight, yep. hopefully. Party Marty. Um, yeah, it's about building your team again and having all the right people there who know what they're doing. You're not gonna be an expert in every facet of it. Yep. So uh, it's, it's, it's having the right people there. Absolutely. And then finally, the last part of this is selling it. Here's my personal advice to you if you're gonna do flips, selling the properties. Start selling it the day you buy it. There's a strategy that I'm trying right now. I'm gonna do this in the spring to prove it before I teach it to everybody in the syndicate. But I know how to run Facebook ads, obviously. That's why you're all here. So what I'm going to do is the minute I get a property, I'm going to target a very specific Facebook ad in that geographic area where that house is. So say within 10 miles of the house. And the ad is going to say, how would you like to buy a new house? Or have you been dreaming of buying a new house, but you can't afford it? If you're interested, I have a property I just bought, and I'm about to rehab. It's in this area. This is what I love about it. And if you want, we can turn this into your brand new house. Give me a call now. We'll arrange a way for you to purchase it now, and then you can tell me the colors of the floors, the types of kitchen, the countertops. You can design the whole place to your own specific needs. And I think that's going to be appealing to people. And so I think it's actually going to lead to me selling the property before I'm even finished and potentially selling it at a higher price without an agent without a real estate agent, keeping more of the money myself. The most important thing, and this will help you building a following as well, if you guys check out my YouTube channel, you'll see there's a new series that I'm starting there around this fourplex that I'm rehabbing. All I'm doing is publishing the content that, about the flip, or we have a program called Buy a House with Sweat Equity, where we're teaching Canadians how to buy homes without any money. Is there anybody here in that program, the Buy a House with Sweat Equity program? I know there are people coming on the weekend that are. And all we're doing for all of the, this YouTube show that has literally tens of thousands of views is we just got cameras in there when we're doing the renovations. And so I, every time I'm doing a property right up front, I'm doing YouTube videos around it and I'm saying, hey, we're gonna sell this property at the end. If you like this location and you wanna own this home, call me now. You can help me design it to your specific intentions. I think it's... The moral to the story is the more content you're producing about what you're doing and bringing people on that journey with you, the more, number one, people are going to see your expertise and they're going to be more willing to trust you. But number two, 
The more money comes in, the more sales happen, everything gets better if you just get comfortable publishing content. So let me ask you guys right across the board one last time around. I want you to each give me three pieces of advice for the newest people in the room to make sure their first flip is successful. And you can't repeat anything anybody else says. Who wants to go first? Yeah, go ahead. So piece of advice when it comes to appraisals. Um, so as is appraisal and ARV appraisal, I would say uh, pay very close attention to those appraisals. We've gotten into or almost gotten into some deals where we put you know properties under contract. We get the as is, as is appraisal come in and it's pretty low. And then the ARV uh, you know hovers around our offer. So then uh, Ken's big on this. Never get into a deal that you can't get out of. Um, so I would say that yeah, the appraisal. That's kind of two. Sorry, Ken, but I mean the appraisal is very very important. That's like the all in, like end all and be all of the deal. So was that one piece of advice or three pieces of advice? That was two. 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 Okay, give me one more. Um, okay, uh, one more. Um, I would say focus in areas where you can get the maximum amount of lift in your flip. So um, big bathrooms, uh, kitchens, those areas where you can add those fine details. I know, Adam, you're big on that. that, and that was sorry, probably, I stole That was probably flow. one of yours, wasn't I it? stole this flow already. I could tell he's like, oh, no. <laughs> okay. Give me <laughs> three <laughs> more, Adam. <laughs> sorry, um, Adam. Yeah, okay. uh, first one I'd say is uh, if you're new to renovations and, and you know, real estate investing and flipping, go out there and actually look at what the products are and what the costs are. So take some trips to Home Depot and Lowe's. Check out your local countertop suppliers, find a kitchen supplier, uh, just so you can kind of know what that means. If your appraiser comes back and says, you know, everyone's, you know, a high-end quartz countertops, you should know what a high-end quartz countertops is, right? It's the difference between a level one and a level five quartz countertop in price and look and feel. Uh, another one is to uh, speak to your local supply yard, stuff like Tile Master and, and flooring companies. You can usually get a con some kind of contractor discount. Um, especially if you have your own your own company, your own development company that you're starting up, uh, that's that's really big. I, I mean, I get 20% off, you know, all my tiling supplies at Tile Master, 5% off at Lowe's, 20% off at Home Hardware in, in Ontario. So, that, that's those savings add up huge. Yeah. Um, and then another one, if you don't know what you're doing, find someone that can help you do it. So, if you're new to house flipping. Search YouTube, you know, if you want to go the free route, join a program like we have with the Syndicate. There's also some entry-level programs I'm sure Ken will talk about as well. Meet somebody in the room here, call up Party Marty, you can party with him, and, <laughs> and I'll help you out, right? You guys, are in, you guys are in Calgary, you know, that's what, in, in, you know, in the Syndicate, everybody reaches out to me if they're looking at a place, you know, in the Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge area of Ontario, so, and we're always happy to help, and, and yeah, we... Three, three, three tips, Andrew. I think comparables are great. You know, uh, you got to know what the property is going to sell for, uh, and you can find a great deal. But if it's not going to sell afterwards, and you know, do it yourself. Go out there, and you know, you can go on MLS, whatever, punch in sold, what's sold in that area, and pull it all up, or get the agent working for you, or have multiple agents always sending comparables, even before you put an offer in. Uh, that's key. Uh, what, I, what can I say that hasn't been said already? Contracting, obviously, party Marty, you got to have those guys in because that's where the money's getting spent, you know, or where you're going to make it in your profit afterwards. Um, and yeah, if they go over budget, and again, like Ken mentioned earlier, you want these guys doing it on time. So, especially if you're using private lenders and you want to get your money back, the sooner you can get that back, the sooner they're going to want to go, hey, great, I get, I'm going to make 20%, not 10 or 15. So, if you can do it in six months, do another flip, another six months, just keep the ball yep. rolling. Yep, perfect. All right, Brittany. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I'm going to say that uh, you should uh, try doing some flips around the neighborhood you live in um, yep. so you can actually be out there um, and be a part of the flip um, so you can save money that way by actually doing some of the demolition or maybe some of the renovations yourself. Um, and then, uh, wow, what else? Hey? <laughs> Um, being out there, like I said, um, doing it yourself. Um, hmm. yeah. Picking a great agent to sell it afterwards. Yeah, an talking. agent. Yeah. yeah. If you're not going to work, you can do it yourself. You know, if you want to do that, if you have time. Uh, yeah. 
selling it. And I, I really like the idea that you've kind of mentioned, Ken, is um, you know, really documenting the whole process. If you want to keep doing this and you want this to be a business of yours, uh, then document everything. And not only that, but it helps when you're selling the home. Um, you can show what you've done to the home, what renovations you've done, and so you have a clear picture of, of what's been done to the house so that you know any problems have been fixed and you can show the next buyer that. And what we've done too is offer incentives. So for an example, if we purchase the property with an agent, we'll offer the same deal with the agent itself to list that property once we flipped it. So to build those relationships, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. you know, long term in different areas, not just in your backyard, but if you're doing flips in different, you know, some people might be doing some in Calgary and Edmonton, but having those agents work for you to purchase the property and also to list it's very key as well. And then one last thing, um, you know, kind of on the on the idea of adding value in the right places, if you can add in an extra kitchen or bathroom into the basement of your home, uh, that's really going to increase the value. So. Yeah, one more thing I'll add to this. If, um, if you're really serious about doing real estate and doing flips, another thing you want to think about, which is something I've finally decided to do, is get your real estate license. Become the agent. Now, before you start rolling your eyes about this, I want you to think about this for a second. If you become an agent yourself, you get access to MLS. You can start looking at details on previous houses. You can do better comparables yourself. And then when you go to sell it, you can list it yourself and keep that money yourself. Um, and I literally convinced a couple friends of mine, Courtney Atkinson and Melanie Meyer, to be here on Sunday. They're real estate agents with EXP. Um, and I've convinced them to stand up here on stage and screw themselves. Yeah, they're going to come up here and they're going to teach everybody how to become an agent themselves. <laughs> Take money out of their own pockets. And I think everybody should really seriously think about doing that. It's just going to make your whole real estate journey easier. And I'm sorry if I've offended any of the real estate agents that are here today. <laughs> Let's give these guys a big round of applause. Thank you guys for being part of this. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Hey, guys. Everybody take a picture. Becoming a better you. Awesome, Joel. Here's another thing. Like, you guys are all VIPs here. Each one of you has spent a lot of money to be in this room today and to be with us over the weekend. One of the things I really want to talk to you about, just really quickly is I, I really think everybody should be involved in some type of flipping of properties. It's just the learning experience, and not to mention the fact that every one of us can do with a couple extra $100,000 in their bank account every year. It's just going to get you into the zone of doing things, uh, and it's probably the most important reason to do it. Throughout the rest of the weekend of our time together today, I've brought in the top experts from across Canada on every little point we just talked about. So Kyle Ford is going to be here after the break, and he's going to talk about mortgages and, and how to get mortgages and how to get the most money you can get in a first mortgage. And then tomorrow I'm going to tell you guys about uh, a little program I have called the Lenders List. So I have a program that has 7,000 lenders on it, and we get 40 or 50 new lenders a month that join it. They pay me to join the program, and I teach them how to lend mortgage money through mortgages, but because they join, I give them exclusively to the, to the people in the syndicate. So the people in the syndicate never have to go ask their friends and family for money. The lenders on the lenders list will give it to them, but here's the catch. I tell the people on the lenders list, if you lend money to somebody in the syndicate and they don't pay you back, then I'm going to sign a power of attorney and I'm going to foreclose and take the property from them and get your money back for you. And I tell the people in the syndicate that if you do a deal with the lenders list and you don't pay back the money, I'm going to kick you out of the syndicate and publicly humiliate you. So it creates this awesome equilibrium where this year alone we've arranged 185 mortgages for people. And I don't make any money in it. I'm just here to help. You know, that's, that's the coolest part. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, a bunch of people are already asking me, how do I get into the syndicate? I'll tell you more about that tomorrow. Um, it's, but it's a really freaking cool program, and we'll get some people up here to talk more about it. It is 13 grand to join, but 
it's the most sophisticated real estate training platform in this country, and I know it is because we're the only real estate training program in our country that a major bank has agreed to do loans so people could join it. So if somebody wants to join the syndicate, you literally could borrow the $13,000, pay 300 bucks a month, it's fully open, and you do your first flip, six months later you make 100 grand and you pay back the loan and you're in for free. So don't worry about it. Like We're only letting 30 people in this weekend, but it'll be 30 people from this group. We're just in the order of the presentation, I, I'm not actually gonna do the pitch to, well, wait, I fucking think I just did the pitch. <laughs> uh, anyway, I've screwed this whole day up. Have you guys enjoyed it anyway? Has it been all right? Okay, good. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take 10 minutes. I want you to go meet somebody new. This time, I want you to tell the person you're talking to your three biggest takeaways from the session we just did on flipping properties. So you take five minutes, tell them you're three, they're gonna take five minutes and tell you you're three and we're gonna get back together in 10 minutes and then I'm gonna ask three of you to give us your first three. So go meet somebody, see you in 10 minutes. <laughs>